Uncle Mike, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. I've been tasked with the responsibility of leading today's discussion. Therefore, welcome to another Forward Focus Thursday, the uh, round table talk of the Cousin family. Um, it was initiated mm -hmm. by Dr. Joseph Cousin, unfortunately, <laughs> cannot be with us today, but he's on, but he won't be seen. Uh, he has other things to do today. But I wish to welcome to the stage uh, those contributors to this. Uh, but before I do, I want to thank our brother Lavender and Reverend Pace and Sister Frey for helping us uh, carry forth this uh, discussion today. Uh, see, we have, uh, as I call your name, uh, please uh, tell us what's going on in your area and we'll go that way. We'll go from the youngest uh, to the wisest, amen. Um, so we'll go with uh, Stephen A. Cousin Jr., what's happening in, the, in your area? I'm doing all right, you know, still listening to the Adele album that I, I, I'm enjoying. Watched a couple of more movies like Ghostbusters, so I'm okay. It, it, it's all it's all good so far. I had a good Thanksgiving, you know, a lot of football, a lot of basketball. I, life is good right now. All right. Next, we have Dr. Joseph N. Cousin. Uh, he can he we can't see him. We can hear him. Joe, give us a shout out. Hey, everybody. I'm I'm good today. I'm in a place where I can't. Uh, I don't have video, but I do have so just. Uh, thank everybody. I want to thank Mike for um, for leading today. And I think this is a good idea to let different people moderate from time to time. So everybody else be on the lookout. And I can't wait for my brother Stephen to be the moderator. That's no, going to be a great show that day. I won't be. And thank you. I Amen. That the next one, Steve. Well, I'm glad to be here. Uh, glad to be with my family today. We're having a great time at Trinity. A very, very, very good place to be, nice place to worship. So I just thank God for Dr. Joseph Cousin and Forward Focus Thursday. Amen. All right. Phil? I want to say um, good morning where I am to everyone as well. And it is good to be on another Forward Focus Thursday and to interact with my family. Um, it, it's good to see everyone. I am at what I would consider to be the far point. I'm as far away as uh, I can be from the family. If I went any farther, I'd be in the Pacific Ocean. And so this is a good way for me to see and to, to interact with my family and see what we can discuss about what's going on with the church. Amen. And Dad? Yeah. Still making it. Thankful for each day. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Every day is a gift. I'm grateful to have have breath and life and still a little mobility <laughs> as things go on. But God's been good, praying that God will continue to bless us. Amen. Well, today's discussion is centered around an article that I sent out to family. And you didn't, say, you didn't send it to me, Michael. Oh, no, I thought I did, Daddy. Well, I'll make sure that you get it. Um, <laughs> I don't need I'll share listen with to Daddy. I'll, I'll listen to you. Go ahead. I don't well, need it now. I can't, pretty much, I, I can't uh, read it now. Go ahead. It's the sixth biggest risk of decline to your organization in 2022. The sixth biggest risk. And it's an article by Clint Rogers, who's the uh, founder of Pro Media Fire. Uh, what prompted this, he was saying that for 2022, each organization, uh, especially the nonprofits, uh, would be at a crossroads. And it, it, either we have an opportunity for growth or one for decline. And he was saying that some of the opportunities that are before us, we see with um, Facebook now shifting to what they're calling meta or metaverse, which is artificial intelligence, more interaction. Uh, what does that mean for us, for those of us who are still uh, sending the facts in a text, a, a, in a texting age? Um, so now the first question is uh, in terms of uh, one, what are the, what are declines is saving money? Well, the church is quick to save money in the area of technology. Um, I'm just gonna throw that out there. What have you all done in terms of uh, budgeting towards technology for this uh, oncoming age? Well, I, I'll start. 
Um, earlier on, what we did when we actually knew we were going to be doing this more long term was that we actually invested in cameras, we invested in the monitors, we invested in updating our technology within the church. So we're still able to stream our services, record our services, because we knew that this was here to stay. Um, fortunately, we were looking at this program, this model, a few years ago, but we didn't want to pull the trigger on it because we kept talking about the cost, how expensive it was going to be. But when the pandemic really did occur, and knowing that this was really the way we had to go, uh, we bit the bullet and we actually made the sacrifice to invest in, um, in our technology, which I believe is paying off right now, where um, we were able to host um, the first ever district conference that was hybrid, where we allow people to be in person and able for those who wanted to be on Zoom to be on Zoom. And also those who were on Zoom, they're able to participate where we actually heard their voices through the church's system. And we actually got great reviews about it. People did see like, hey, um, this could work. So we made the investment earlier on. It is paying off. But that was something we knew that we had to do. Right. Yeah, Mike, I think, I think that uh, the problem comes down to two issues. The first is resources and the second is mindset. Where, with respect to resources, the hurdle is going to be not every congregation or local church is going to have the resources necessary. And so it has to be uh, understood that there are technological levels and to, to rise to the, to the first or second level is not going to be as expensive as going to the full-blown sound stage and studio. And people need to understand that. But uh, the, the second hurdle is the most critical one, and that's mindset, because we've got, a, we've got a conflicted mindset in the local church. We pastor local churches where people come to church in cars that drive themselves, and these same folk do not see the need to invest in the church's technology. And that, that's, a, that's a, a striking contradiction. And so we've got to do something to affect the mindset of the membership because it, it doesn't become an issue as long as it remains solely in the mind of leadership. Leadership has to find a way to move that issue into the center so that it becomes everyone's concern and not just leadership's concern because it's, it's, it's somewhat disheartening to have people come in and say, well, the church does not need all that technology. Excuse me while I call my car to the curb to come and pick me up and drive me home. Exactly. Amen. I think one term we have to look at before Steve brings his point, um, explaining the term hybrid. We hear that a lot in terms of hybrid worship. Uh, persons uh, are not still clear on that. Go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, that's uh, in person and virtual which we have done at Trinity. And I just thank God for officers at Trinity who understand the need for technology. Uh, we have a pretty healthy technology uh, budget that we have not exhausted. And so we're trying to upgrade our system all the time as we prepare for people to uh, come back to the church, you know, because we have, we, we've been out now since the 23rd of March in what was that, 2020? Yeah, yeah, 2020, we've been, we've been out just that long. But one good thing about being out is you have an opportunity to do some things and to implement some things without all the chatter that you'll get, that, that you will get from the congregation. Because there are folk in the congregation who don't see the need for it. But with the few I have, the few we have at Trinity, who've been uh, continuing this, especially in a virtual worship, we understand. So prayerfully, by the time the people come back, we will have done a whole lot of things to uh, surprise them. Dan, you, I sent the article to you. I'm sorry, you're getting it late. Uh, you have anything you wish to add about it in terms of resourcing for technology? 
No, I'm I'm listening today. Okay. All right. Uh, Joe, you have anything you wish to add to that? Okay. Uh, I see uh, PJ Ricks, thank you for joining us. The next thing is in terms of with technology, one of the declines would be that the church will move too slow. We hear the term pivot, where this could be a decline or it could be growth, but it depends upon the pivot of the church. How can the church see itself in terms of making the pivot towards growth and not necessarily remaining stagnant or decline? What can we do? How can we teach our colleagues? How can we teach our membership? I mean, yeah, we, we've all we've yeah, always ahead, said that. The, I was going to say we always said that the church is twenty years behind the times, um, in terms of where we are, you know, um, culturally, um, theologically, what what have you. And so we've always had a difficult time pivoting, you know, to, to the next thing. Um, even right now, if you look at Bitcoin, uh, where, you know, that's, that's the new thing to invest in now, but we're still skeptical of it, um, some of us, because it's still new. Um, because anything that's new, we always say that hasn't really stood the test of time. We have to give it a certain amount of years. Is this going to be a fad or is this going to be uh, here, uh, something that's going to be here to stay and I think for us we don't really recognize you know soon enough things that we need to really pivot on and I really believe that's why we have such a decline in our church overall because we don't pivot fast enough and so I think that even before you know the pandemic we never actually had to pivot or we took our time where the church has remained stagnant and our mindset and our growth and just where we were as a denomination where we, we didn't need a pandemic to decline. We were already in that state because of our inability to actually move on the fly. You know, you, we, what we have to do is understand the shift. Things are shifting. I remember as a young lad years ago, riding the elevator. And they had an elevator operator. And you would uh you would tell her what floor you wanted and all this, and she'd sit there, you know, and, 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 and but now we don't we don't have that. I have a man in my church who was a pin setter, and he had to set up the pins at the bowling alley. I, you know, I've I've heard about the ice man. All this stuff is gone. We have to shift, we have to make that shift. And if we don't make the shift, then we will get lost in the shuffle. And that's the truth, just like Radio Shack. Look at Radio Shack. I love Radio Shack. I went in Radio Shack all the time. Where is Radio Shack? Oh, it's gone. Oh, because they did gone. not understand the shift. And unless we understand the shift that things are changing, then you know we, we're just not gonna get anywhere. Daddy had a real to real player a long time ago. I loved to play with it, probably broke it, messed it up. Mama had a cassette player. I love that cassette player. Daddy got an eight track and all, and it just goes on and on. Where is the eight track? Where's the cassette player? Where's the reel to reel? Things have changed. And so unless the church changes, then we're going to get lost in the shuffle. So yeah, go ahead. No, we've got, we've got to, to, to recognize the, the, the expression goes strike while the iron is hot. Mm -hmm. The church needs to learn how to strike while the iron is there. By the time we strike, the iron has moved. We, th there are lessons to be learned all around us. Look at Kodak and what happened to Kodak when they failed to fully embrace what the new technology of the digital camera was going to do to their enterprise. And they came along at a time when everybody knew that you got a roll of film, you took your pictures, then you took it somewhere to have it developed. When is That's the right. last time anybody you know went somewhere to have a roll of film developed? And the church needs to understand that, that the time moves on whether the church does or not. And we have got to learn how to, how to pivot. But our churches are battleships in a, in a light cruiser world. You know, that, and if you look at the United States Navy or any Navy in the world, the battleship is a behemoth of the past whose time has come and gone. It was a mighty vessel, well armed and, and able to launch an offensive assault, but the battleship 
was phased out because it took too long to pivot. It could not right. move. It was cumbersome. Right. And it was replaced by the light cruiser. And we need our churches feel that. to embody a mindset that will enable us to pivot when necessary, redirect resources, and and act as opposed to react to our circumstances. Yeah, Joe. No, I, I was saying I, I watched Titanic years ago with Mike. And um, I always asked Mike, I said, man, I don't understand why the ship sunk when they knew the iceberg was there. And Mike always says the ship was too big to turn quick enough to avoid the iceberg. So by the time they saw the iceberg, it was too late because they were already done for. And that's kind of what we find ourselves now. If, if you pivot too late and you're too big, doesn't matter whether you see the iceberg or not, you're not gonna be able to avoid it. But and I, I, would, I would bring this, um, this statement up, blockbuster video. Mm -hmm. where we, we never thought loved it but but the thing was when Redbox came out where people started going to Redbox then Netflix Blockbuster really dug their heels in the sand and said that it's the loyalty that customers have to, to Blockbuster they still want to come in and rip from us because they're on, we have a loyal fan base people aren't loyal anymore and True. I think and you have to recognize that I mean, Steve, like, it's what, more about, huh? Remember how Netflix started, too? Netflix yeah. didn't start as streaming. Netflix started as, as sending you DVDs in the mail. And you could send them back anytime you want. Uh, with That's no right. With no late penalty. And, and yeah, so, streaming with, came with, later. Yeah. yeah. And, and so with, with that being said, because we, we, we have these blinders on that they're loyal to the AME church that we don't have to do anything because people are born and, and bred in the AME church. They're never going to leave. And we're fine. That's not the case. People aren't loyal. People want to go to places where it's relevant, where they feel that they are acknowledged and they feel that they are heard and respected. But if you keep saying that you're going to be, you're going to stick, you're going to be with us because of the brand, clearly that's not going to work because Blockbuster thought the same thing, and right. there's only one more blockbuster left in Alaska <laughs> that's still hey, going, that's still holding on. Hey, let me, Dad, you, Dad needs to jump in because Dad was, and I were talking about this yesterday. Come on, Dad, give you a spin on this about brand loyalty. We talked about it yesterday. Uh, there, there, we have no, no brand loyalty because we have nothing that comes that lets us know what the brand is about and what it can do. We, we now have churches and conferences and districts which do their own thing. And right. they have, they, we, we, we've become to the point where we, 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 we're just so eclectic. We pick everything. It doesn't mean anything to be an AME now because being an AME doesn't, count what we don't have a brand if if you look at at our denomination and take a look at our denomination what is it that stands out about the african methodist episcopal church that lets you know it's a brand that we can hang our hat on you tell me one it used yeah. to be education it used to be education what what is it now we the only thing, only thing that you hear now is budget, income, money. Yeah. Yeah. That, now, that that that's the, the danger. The danger comes, as, as I have been saying for the last couple of years, and I guess uh, uh, like an old man's sermon, I preach it again. We are no longer a denomination. We we are not a co-federation. We are a federation of Episcopal districts who meet every now and then, hear what's good for, the, for, for everybody, but then go back to our own little separate corners and right. do what we want to do. And therefore there is no branding. What, 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 what may be done in the first is not done in the 20th, and what done in the 10th is not done in the fifth. So we, we don't have any brand. We, do, we don't have anything to hang our hat on now. We, we, we used to be, we used to be, 
the outstanding black denomination for trained clergy, trained communities, pushing education to the highest. That's why we had so many schools. Now, how many of them are functional now? Right. It, it's, it's just, we, we have, we are so, so, so quick to switch. And the, the thing that, that, that really gets me is, we used to, it, in so many ways, and I, I, I don't even like to say it, we used to laugh sometimes at the Church of God in Christ, mm -hmm. at, at the way they were doing, and, and call them holy rollers, because they used to get on the floor and roll, and that, that was their shouting time. Do you know, they came in, picked up everything that we used to do, and now we're trying to get back to do what they did because we lost, they gained by, by becoming what we are, and what we were, and we lost that. And we, we're now swinging more toward congregationalism. When you get, when, when is it that the, that the denomination has lost its, its stature as an Episcopal led church with congregations to name their preacher? What is that? Right. Congregationalism. And that's where we're going. So you, we, don't, we don't have a brand. So I am AME. I wish somebody would write down what does it mean to be an AME now. Well, and if you, if you ask the young folk, I ask the young folk, you know what they say it is? It, it says, I got to know how to pay budget, how to raise money. No, but, but, we have a question but, here. The, uh, before a uh, question here, somebody gives a question. Uh, what can be done to rebrand the AME Church? I think we'll get back to that. Uh, Phil, go right ahead with your comment. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, my, my comment was going to be that as a denomination and in all of our local churches, we are living off of a snapshot in a video world. We have this picture of what we used to be in time, frozen in time, like a photograph. But we're living in a video world and time is passing all around us. Part of the, I, I go back to the whole mindset problem. We came to believe at some point that we were too big to fail. And I, I got a 30 second story to tell you about that. That involves a battleship in the fog, a battleship on a foggy night. They saw another light off in the distance. And so the ship signaled to the light, collision course, adjust course 20 degrees. And the message came back from the flashing light, collision course, adjust your course, 20 degrees. And the, the ship sent back, uh, I am a captain. Adjust your course, 20 degrees. And the flashing light sent back, I'm a seaman first class. Adjust your course, 20 degrees. And finally, outraged, the captain flashed, I am a battleship. Adjust your course, 20 degrees. The light flashed back, I am a lighthouse. Adjust your course, Lord have mercy. And the battleship adjusted its course 20 degrees. We're on a collision course with the reality that we think we are larger than. And somebody had better be at the wheel and adjust the course because right now everybody there seems asleep or aloof or oblivious. So let me get to this point here. It says here, one of the dangers in terms of pivoting is when we want to play it safe, no innovation. We mentioned Kodak. Kodak invented the digital camera, but look at Kodak. They did not take advantage of what they brought out, as well as with Blockbuster, which was headquartered in Fort Lauderdale. When I, I lived there when they shut down their headquarters because hmm. of Netflix and Redbox. It was Redbox that put them out of business. They had a chance to get Redbox. Now, here it is. I think one of the uh, declining moments, uh, one of the points here, uh, factors in terms of decline of growth is um, expiration dates, you know, passing expiration dates. Technology does have an expiration date. Again, getting back to um, Facebook, when now Facebook is making a major pivot um, in terms of uh, in, in terms of its technology. Uh, meta. Uh, meta. We're going to Meta, right. which is artificial intelligence. Uh, we see now, even with the innovations now with, with cell phones, which are, which are really many computers, um, with, your, with, with your iPads, technology has an expiration date. 
So now, how is it that we in the church can gain a better understanding of what types of designs, especially with websites, um, with, uh, with our texting to our members? Used to be a time person was to say, we need a telephone tree. How, I still I, do. How, how many folks actually still do the telephone tree? I still versus, do. I yeah, need one. Mike, you know, let me tell you, let me take you, you back. You have those, I, you know, you yeah. can send out a simple text and you can hit more folk in five seconds than you can yeah. recall. Let me, well, let, me, let me take you back to the mindset thing again, because, and I use daddy as an example. You ought to remember, you, you might remember, way back when we lived in Kitchell. Steve, you remember when daddy got that, uh, elect he got that electronic box tied to the uh, antenna on the roof of the house. I remember. Got, daddy was that daddy was innovative. You got to be innovative if you at if you're it in would turn leadership. It would turn that antenna. Right. And daddy, daddy figured out that you could, if you turn that antenna in a different direction, wasn't no cable and show wasn't no direct TV, no satellites, but you could, if you could turn that antenna and he put, uh, he put a device in place so we could go over to the TV. And if the reception was bad, we could turn a dial and that antenna would actually rotate until you got to a better signal point. And it, it, it but, but that, that's innovative thinking. And our, our leadership in the local church sometimes just gets exhausted and, and disgusted with trying to lead where folk won't follow, but you still got to have you know, it, it is, it's incumbent upon the pastor to, to, to be or put people in place who can stay uh, abreast of these new trends in technology so we don't wind up always getting something two days after it's expired. Well, now, now, Phil, now Phil, here's the, here's the thing. We have bishops and church leaders pressing for in-purpose meetings in the midst of a, of a health pandemic in the midst of COVID, which doesn't make sense. I'm trying to figure out why. I mean, why? You know, really? I'm not, I don't, I don't want to put God to the test. I've, I've dodged COVID, you have, and you know, everybody on here has, but I don't want to put God to the test. But they continue to want to have these, 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 these meetings. That's just like getting off a jet airplane and going, let's, let's go catch the bus. Let's get on the bus. Oh no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not. Gonna, I'm. I'm trying to move forward, and that's what. That's what bothers me. And until our church leadership really gets that firmly in place, then something's going to happen. We're going to lose. We will continue to lose because people are sick and tired of paying all this money, going to meetings. What do you do? Hey, doc, how you doing, doc? Then we lie. We, we, you know, we say we're doing okay when we're really not. We shake hands, we grin, we go eat, we spend all that money in the hotel when we could be doing other things. That money could be put into the church, that money could be put into, in, in, into the community, something. But they're bent on these large doggone gatherings, which, which to me, in my mind, makes little sense at all. It so makes, I, I, it makes no sense. I just want to say that with the pandemic, we've discovered that technology can cut down the number of days that we meet as well as the cost, correct? Yes. Yes. I'd be willing to pay more just to sit home. And yes. Mike, it can do it in it can do it in theory, but not always in practice. Okay. You know, let, 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 let me raise an issue. The word pivot is normally associated with what? Basketball. 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 And why what is the pivot? The pivot is the foot that remains, allows you to turn without losing your position or losing your value. Now, if, 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 if we pivot, if we pivot, we pivot, but we move our pivot foot and we lose the anchor that holds us. When you pivot, you have one foot on the ground that keeps you anchored to what you're trying to do. And in the sport of basketball, you were trying to score a point and win. If you moved that pivot foot, you were out and you lost. Now, we are trying to pivot 
by moving our pivot foot where we want it to go. Our pivot foot ought to be anchored in what the church is all about. So no matter what we do, there ought to be one thing that anchors and holds us, allows us to pivot. And that is, what is the church? How are we the church? Whether we are in technology or not, there ought to be the thing that keeps us balanced and allows us to pivot is the fact that we have not moved that one thing that holds us stable and keeps us in a position where we are always in place to do the job and to score the point, to score the point in basketball, but it's score the point in the church is to grow the church, is to make certain that the church doesn't lose its sense. So we turn, but we don't lose our pivot foot. When we lose our pivot foot, when we pivot, we are dead and the pivot has no value. Now, well, I see great, some great of the questions here online. Uh, one is, uh, I think you've addressed that from uh, one of our viewers, Star Hawk, in terms of rebranding the church. That's a good, uh, uh, a good analogy there, Daddy, about making sure we remain grounded. Jerry Turner, shout out to you, Jerry, who said that uh, has the church lost its anchor? I think that um, in in this in this whole discussion, getting to it now, staying on of the good analogy of pivoting and expiration dates, I think that it shows us one of the, fa one of the uh, factors of decline or one of the uh, things that we must address is culture without passion. Has the church lost its passion? Uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, fervor, uh, people are quitting jobs and we see now that even pastors are walking away from churches uh, because of this pandemic, uh, the lack of interaction, um, there's no real fulfillment. Um, you know, we, we, we preach sermons. We don't know if we're hitting persons out there um, in terms of the call response of what we are, what we are culturally used to. Um, have we lost our passion? Um, I, can, I, I can tell you what, I can tell you what happened, Dr. Cousin. We were, we were born out of the social gospel, the free African society, actually helping people. Then, then, then somehow or another, we, 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 we're leaning more toward uh, a sacred Holy Ghost situation. When what we really need to do is we need to help people. If we go back to helping people, then I believe that the church would grow. You know, well, if we just, you yeah, know, let, we, have, let me, we have lost let me just it. Say, go let ahead, me son. just say this. Go ahead, son. I really believe, me personally, that the Black church is narcissistic at its core. Ooh, okay. Where we're more right. about positions, we're more about who's leading what committee than actually helping people because it's all about status, it's all about the title, and we couldn't be anything in the in the outside world, but at least in the church, I could be an officer. I can actually be able to sit up in the front. I can wear a different type of outfit that distinguish myself for being an officer, I can wear a nameplate where I may not get the respect in the outside world, but at least I get the respect and order over people in the church. And so for me personally, yes, was it about helping people? It was, but I think it has moved now where it's about what color you're going to wear. Can't wear purple, can't wear blue, gotta sit here, gotta sit there, That's can't park point, here. Huh? So with, with that being said, it's, it's all about the first thing we cut in our church is outreach ministry when budgets get tight. <laughs> because the first thing we look at cost saving measures, we start actually reducing our budget and we, we don't need to give to our food bank. We don't need to give to the community right. we, because we need to actually make sure we pay operating expenses, keep people in line. So that's where we actually lost it where we're so narcissistic, it's all about maintaining the appearance of helping people with all about, we're really just helping ourselves to another title or to another position. Wow. Mm, I would, Steve, wow. I would tweak, I would tweak your perspective just a little. Mm. When churches, when churches start looking at making cuts, mm. outreach is the second place they look. What's the first one? Pastor the first, salary. The first place they look is the pastor's salary and compensation? That's right. Always, but I, but I, I digress. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go there. I think when we look at the state of the church overall, 
the church and those who serve her and worship there are having a difficult time holding on to their hope because we have all lost our sense of expectation. We don't expect anything to happen anymore. We don't expect, we have, we have no expectations. We just want to get from month to month, from assessment to assessment, we harbor no expectation. You know, I, I, have, a, I have a firm belief. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a foundational part of my theology. If you expect God to do something, God will. But if you don't, God will not disappoint you. Yeah. And so we, now, you know, what, what we've done, and, and now to get to get to the heart of your narcissistic idea, Steve, you're absolutely right. Our narcissism cuts God completely out of the process. And if God gets invited in, God gets invited in as a supporting cast member, not a main one. So now to get, to, get to, point, to get to your point, it says here, a culture void of passion produces this massive problem of resignations as well as decline. So are we, how do we, re, how do we reignite the passion within, within our churches in this age of uh, COVID? Well, first, what are we passionate about? Yeah. What are we passionate about? Can we, can we, put, a, can we put a finger on that? Yeah. I think, it, I think it goes back to, in terms of the point of where dad said about the pivot making sure that we are grounded. What are we grounded in that gives us passion? We should, mean, be right? grounded, we should be grounded in the fact that the basic, the basic function of the church is what Jesus said as it is. Go, teach, baptize, make disciples. That's right. Now, when, when, when we stop making that the basis upon which we create any kind of pivot, we lose our strength. No matter what happens with the social uproar, with social media, all this, we still have to maintain the fact that the one thing that keeps us as a church, you must teach, preach, baptize, spread the gospel, take care of the community where there's a need and a hurt. We have lost our sense of understanding what the church is all about. And we've made it become nothing more than a large community center where the only thing that is important in the AME church, two words that control everything in the AME church, election and assignment. Who's going to get elected, whether it comes from the local church for trustee or officer to the conference, to the connection of the church, and then where are you going to be assigned? These two words control everything. And when they control everything, they cause our pivot foot to shake. And when, when you let election and assignment control everything in your church, you're in trouble. Remember, the church, we didn't start the church. We hopefully follow what Jesus gave as a roadmap for us to keep the church alive. When we begin to make the church become a social institution, we be careful that we don't allow the social institution to overcome the evangelical fervor. And that's the passion, right. Michael, that you're talking about. There has to be an evangelical fervor that keeps us alive to make sure that we are about spreading the good news of the gospel as it relates to life in the community and not let the community dictate how we operate within the framework of the church. You know, Bishop, like, Bishop, Bird, Bishop Bird said something that and I've kind of kept it down through the years. He had a saying, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. So, you know, if, if, if we're not in that business, then, then we're saving nothing. You know, we have to, you know, and that's what, that, that's what bothers me. It bothers me a lot. You know, to go through a whole year, conversions, none, accessions, none. And that really, you know, that, that, that really causes my heart to sink because that's what, that's what we should be about. But we are so busy every six months having to raise this money 
to send out. This is the truth. And if you don't have the money, then you can have your accessions, but you better have that money. Somebody say amen. I know y'all ain't gonna amen on that. I know y'all. Well, it, it, you look at you know when we make our pastoral reports, we always have to talk about amount raised, amount brought to conference. It's always about what is the bottom line figure, total raise from all sources, and then they want to talk about conversions or or accessions, and then they may give you just one minute to talk about a life in the church. We're not talking about ministries that were created. We're not talking about things you've done in a community to improve the life and the quality of the community. We're just talking about how did you bring your budget money? Did you pay your periodicals? Do you have a lay organization? Do you have a women's missionary society? If not, then you're not really pastoring. So what, <laughs> what, right. what, 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 what is our value structure? I mean, I was taught from the outside that, hey, we don't care how many programs you implement we don't care what you do in the community. As long as you pay your budget on time, that determines if you're a good pastor and that would determine if you're up for a promotion. Not about if you, are you effective, your community, if you can shape policy. Can you pay your budget on time? If you can't, you're not pastoring and you may be moved because you can't pay your budget. I remember, I remember, I have to, I, I got to get this story out there. Years ago, I was pastoring a church. We had a bell tower problem. And the, the, the bell tower was weak. And they were afraid that the bell was going to fall through the ceiling and, and hit folk. So we had to make a choice. Either we're going to fix the bell tower or pay the budget. Now, we had the budget money. And folks said, uh, Reverend, you know, we need to fix the bell tower because that's, you know, this, this is us. We fixed the bell tower. And that year, I did not pay the budget. Wasn't a whole, whole lot of money but I didn't pay it. And so you know what happened to me? I got sent to a circuit church. Glory to God. Nobody there. But one of the churches had a parsonage, they said. And it was, it was, it was about the size of a Home Depot storage shed. And the elder had the nerve to tell me that it's nice inside. I never went inside. I went back to the bishop. I said, Bishop, if you're going to send me anywhere, send me to one church. Don't send me to two. Because I was trying to go to school and everything else. I tell you, I know what happens when you don't pay the budget. I do. You get sent to what the older bishops called, you know, the, the, the bishops before us. You got you got sent to short grass. You Ain't no grazing in there. Grass, yeah. Short grass. Ain't no grazing in there. Oh, no. You're going to. And I, well, I, let, let me shut up. I, I got to go to mute. I'm muting. So what, I, what, I, what I'm seeing here. This is this has been a a, a, a subject. I uh, got quite a few people asking questions here. Damone Mitchell um, and Christina, Christina Dickinson cousin. Uh, good to see you. Uh, our brother David is on. Good to see you, Dave. Mama. Um, I think one thing that 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 is with our passion. Uh, when we see mission, we will have passion. So, do we really fully understand our mission? Daddy has said about it. Uh, a lot of times churches are converted into nice community centers. You have those that look at the church going into business. So the bottom line is, have we lost our vision and because we do not understand our mission? Yes. Yes. So some, some of us got it, but it's not, that's not the majority. I mean, there, there are some of us who actually understand why, why we've been called and what we're, what we're assigned to do. But for the most part, people, you know, that I've noticed are just looking for the next church, the next appointment, and they're gonna do what they can just so they can actually move up. Do they actually need to be on the general board? Do they need to be on this certain committee, board of examiners? What do I gotta do just to move up and really don't really focus on the mission of why you accepted your calling in the first place. And that's why I say we could become narcissistic where we just want the title. We want to, we were more about ego than anything else. Where you got people who take selfies at a hospital with their members dying and say, I'm doing the Lord's work. You're promoting yourself. 
<laughs> you're, you're trying to show people how, how pious you are, but you're really son. just promoting yourself. You have no regard or concern for that member who you're supposed to be there for. Yeah. So unless you can actually, you only do mission if you act, if it's a publicity stunt, where you're there in front of the cameras, you can actually have a picture, be in the Christian recorder and say, look what I've done. But it, what, what's in it for you? Mission work, if you're really about the mission, you don't brag about it. You do it because you're compelled to, because you actually are, you're authentic, you're being genuine. You ain't got to say, look at me, look what I've done. I, I should get this reward. Then that's when Jesus said, you already received your reward. And when people talk about, you know, with the money situation, it was about the budget. If you're really passionate about ministry, if you're passionate about mission, you have to develop other streams of revenue. I'm going to say this. Um, it may be controversial, but tithes and offerings are dead. They can no longer support the church. If you do not have other streams of revenue coming in, your church will die. If your church does not have an endowment, it does not apply for grants, if it does not have any streams of other revenue coming in, you cannot solely rely on the pocketbooks within your church. It's never going to be enough. Ah, wait, wait, wait. I don't mean to cut you off, but now you're talking about endowments and grants, which takes us to another area of technology, of having the capability to know the separation of church and state we will not be in uh, being tax liabilities upon the church, as well as a lot of pastors. When I'm saying pastors, a lot of persons have abused those things because they did it, not have those measures in place. The, the misappropriation of, of the grants and endowments is what messes you up. The commingling of your funds, where you do not yeah, understand the yeah. separation. There's a firewall that is there. Many of our churches have fallen by the wayside for the fact that they did not understand these things and have lost themselves in um, taxes. Uh, well, my time, we have about 10 minutes left and um, I think that I'm um, trying to stay as, uh, as close as possible uh, to the time. Um, I see so many comments coming in, quite a few of them. Um, I'm trying to get to as many as I can. Courage to change the system, which is I'm seeing right now, the Ooh. system, the system. Courage to change the system. Daddy preached a sermon, who's right. going to bail the cat? Right. Yeah. All right. So, you know, the mice having, a, having a, a, a convention about the cat that was in the house, they said, what we need is to put a bell around his neck. We can tell where he is. And the mice says, a good idea. That's a good idea. But then one mouse came up and said, now, who's going to bail the cat? <laughs> so now, who's going who's gonna to bail the cat in terms of this system? We have courage. Who's going to have the courage to bail this cat? That it seems like it gets, it keeps coming back to this uh, in terms of our system. So what you what you what you have what you put out there, Mike, is the the distance between the idea, the solution, and its implementation. Mm -hmm. Everybody can have an idea as to what the problem is, and move from that to an idea of what the solution is. But now, how do you implement the solution? And because two things, two things come to mind. And the first of them is risk. Who is willing to risk implementation? The mice fail because they couldn't find a mouse who was willing to take the risk to bail the cat. Because you got to understand pretty much that's a suicide mission. Mm -hmm. that, and, 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 in the, and in the church amongst the rank and file clergy, I'm sorry, I'll go on record. That's a suicide mission. You bail the cat, that's a suicide mission. You ain't coming back. You ain't coming back. And, and, that's, and that's what makes it prohibitive. And, and so we get a lot of people who can do the armchair philosophizing. Right. But they'll never implement the solution, no matter how good it is, because we know what we know what the we know what the repercussions are. I told a feel, I told a bishop. I told a bishop one time, you know, I, I said, Bishop, I'm never going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. And this bishop came across with a budget that was just way out of bounds, way out the ballpark. I went to that bishop. I went to the bishop myself. I said, I'll bite the bullet. And I said, Bishop, 
your budget is too high. Oh, boy. It was downhill from there. I mean, down, 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 down. But you were a presiding elder then, weren't you? I was. I was a presiding elder because, uh, you know, and and, and I thought the role of the presiding elder was to advise the bishop. You know, if you have some advice, you know, share it with the bishop. But Lord have mercy. When I did that, that stuff started started to change. And I went down, down, down. And let me tell you something. If a bishop doesn't like a presiding elder, that bishop can find all kinds of pastors to send to that presiding elder's district. They didn't do nothing where they were and going to pile them up on that presiding elder. And sooner or later, that presiding elder is going to fall. I mean, that's, that's just like stacking the deck. Well, let me, just let me shut up. I'm going back to mute. Well, that's all right. Uh, I have for to go our back. friends, for our friends that are watching, please give us a thumbs up if you if you've enjoyed the discussion thus far. We may extend it by two minutes. Uh, just give us a thumbs up. Let's let's see some thumbs up. Let's see some likes on this very salient conversation. Thank you so much if you enjoyed. I see them popping up right now. Uh, so now with this whole discussion of getting back to the declines. The risk, well, the risk for 2022, I think the greatest risk that we see now in terms of having trust, um, trust among ourselves, trust in the system, uh, as well as being able to uh, trust that the move of God will happen within our churches, not just believing, but trusting that it is to take place. So as we prepare to close out right now on this discussion uh, that that we have enjoyed, and thank you so much. Uh, to our friends, thank you so much that are still giving thumbs up. Thank you so much uh, for this. I think the greatest thing we have to look at now in terms of um, our churches for 2022, uh, as we go into the new year of putting God first, um, of, of trusting and believing that the God we serve is a God that will not allow us to fail. So with that, we can have the greatest technology, we can have all the bells and whistles, but unless we have a purpose and a passion for our purpose and we believe in terms of what, if we keep the pivot, as daddy would say, keep the pivot foot grounded in what it is to be, then all else is for naught. Um, We'll get some uh, closing comments. I'm trying to stay close to the time, it's 12.57. We'll start with the uh, youngest and we'll wrap it up. Uh, right now. Uh, Steve, give us your wrap up for you, Steve Jr. I think one of your commenters, um, Damon Mitchell, he mm-hmm. actually said it best saying that the early church expanded due to martyrdom, where people are willing to die for their beliefs. And because they're willing to die, that's how the church grew. I think right now we become too comfortable in where we are in our livelihoods, the, the houses that we live in, what have you, that we're not willing to give that up for, for the church, so to speak. So unless you have people who are willing to put everything on the line because they believe in this church so strongly about what it is and what it can become, we're always, next year, we're going to talk about us being the further decline. <laughs> we're always going to talk about until we have nothing. But who are going to be the ones who's going to be willing to say, you know what, I love this church so much that I'm willing to risk everything for it. And until that happens, we're always going to have this conversation. We're always going to talk about the problems, but we'll never find the ones to really stand up and be willing to risk and lose everything. Right. Joe? Yeah. Hey, uh, Mike. Thanks, everybody. Great discussion today. Um, But, Dad, you talked about pivoting. And I just want to leave us with this. As a church, especially, our pivot is always Jesus. Our anchor is always Jesus. That's what holds us. And what we've tried to do many times is they brought in, in the NBA, Dad, the Euro step, which allowed you to bypass the pivot. Let's don't bypass our pivot and try to Euro step Jesus out of the church. Remember that Jesus is always the pivot by which we're able to remain anchored. Amen. All right, Steve. You're on mute. You're, you're on mute, Grant, Dad. Okay, okay, here we go. Let me get off mute. I'm too old to be looking for another assignment. 
So I'm going to do the best I can where I am. And if we have to have the battle royale cage match at Trinity, let's 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 have that. <laughs> but I'm going to be right there where I am and make my own mighty cloud of joy because I know ain't nobody looking for me. So I have to look for myself. Amen. Bill? I want to go back to what uh, Steve Jr. lifted that uh, I think it was Damon Mitchell said about about martyrdom yeah. and, and just give it some historical perspective because yeah. we've taken the word martyr and made it uh, mean that someone is willing to die for a cause. The word martyr means witness, martyr. It means witness. Yep, that's and right. so uh, a martyr is one who witnesses. For, for, for the apostle Paul, born out of time, the greatest sin that could be committed as a follower of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. was hamartia. And that's to take the word martyr. Steve, work with me on this. And you make it an alpha privative by adding an alpha in front of it. It becomes hamartia. And hamartia means failure to witness. That's right. And when you look at the problem of the church moving forward, it is going to be the failure to witness. And what and happened to Paul? what kills you what happened as to Paul? surely as witnessing kills you. You know what happened to Paul? It's Exactly. It's, but it's you're, you're right, fellas. It's literally missing the mark. That's what it means. It's when you miss yeah, your mark. How Martia made, and for Paul, that's what, what is Martia is to miss the mark. Exactly. How Martia mark. is yeah, to miss the mark. mark. But, it's failure, but it's failure to witness. And so yeah. we've got to find. So it, it, it's not finding the, the strength of purpose to speak, even if it kills you. It's finding the strength of purpose to speak, period. Well, Uncle Amen. Phil, real quick, Amen. I blame this on Granddad Amen. because he named he named my um my dad Stephen that I got the name from. The first martyr in the Bible was named Stephen. Enough said. <laughs> All yes, right, yeah. but, but what got what got Stephen killed? Was his witness? Was his witness? Was it now, his mouth? He, let his let mouth. me wrap it up. Now, see, right, he opened his mouth. Y'all extended it. Y'all extended the discussion now. And I'm trying to stay close to the rules as Joe has laid down for me. I didn't know I was married. Nah, you're all right. You do, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great okay. job. We started, we started late, Mike. Okay, well, uh, if uh, for those who, that uh, because we, we keep drifting into a good discussion, and uh, today has been <laughs> a very excellent discussion. I'm going to yeah. close out. I'm going to let Daddy close us in prayer. Um, I just wish to recognize Sister Jacqueline Knight, who watches from Morganton, Sister Arthelda Harrison down in uh, Atlanta. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, everybody else, thank you. Uh, you can view this again over and over. It's going to be on the website for um, Allen Temple. Um, again, give us some um, thumbs up on today's discussion. And then behind me, my closing remarks uh, coming up to uh, Saturday. December 4th, the founding of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, my chapter, Beta Upsilon, Alabama State University. Shout out to the brothers who actually watched this. Thank you so much, my brothers. Much love to you. As well as for those who, who want to know what the AME Church is all about, buy my book. Amen. The Artificial <laughs> Rules. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> buy my book. You and your understanding of oh, it is on book. Amazon. Look for the unofficial rules of the AME Church. I've had bishops, <laughs> I've had bishops to call me and say, where did you get this information from? He said, it needs to be with the Board of Examiners. So here it is, the unofficial <laughs> rules of the Do AME Church. Dr. Cousin, Dr. Truth. Cousin, Dr. 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 Cousin, can, Cousin. I, can I buy yeah. it on my Kindle, Dr. Cousin? Can I buy it on my Kindle? Yes, you can buy all technology. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Buy it on your Kindle. Amen. It's, it, it is an e-book as well on Amazon, amen. Buy the book and you can understand uh, <laughs> over 40 years of service within the AME church. And again, I want to say this last plug, <laughs> all views expressed by the, uh, by the contributors are necessarily, necessarily mine. <laughs> that's true. Amen. So, amen. Amen, to that. amen. We do have folk watching. Amen. They do oh, yeah. watch. Uh, but again, thank you so much. And as always, uh, to the one that has helped us through this and the one who gives us wisdom, shout out to mama, but, and, to, and the one who helps us in this whole thing to understand it. Remember, God called us, but we chose the AME Church. And we Amen. wish to make Amen. it better.
because we love the church. Daddy, close us out with your remarks and then uh, close out with prayer. It's interesting to hear, uh, coming from Damon Mitchell, a young man that, that I happen to, to know from, from his early beginning days in Alabama. The, the one thing that I would put into your, your bank of understanding, the AME Church has had difficulties and every now and then there comes a time for a revolution. Right. Every now and then there comes a time when there are when there are witnesses who come up. I have lived through them from the 46th General Conference when they did away with four bishops to the 56th General Conference when they tried to restructure the whole church. In 52, when they had the, the, the saying that you couldn't stay but eight years in any place, up until 72, up until 68 with the changing. We're now ripe for another, another revolution. We are ripe for another time when witnesses from persons who are not trying to be bishops, who are not trying to be anything but witnesses might come forward and say what needs to be said. Amen. There was, there was the brotherhood which came and what happened, the leaders of the brotherhood got co-opted and several of them got elected bishop. And so the brotherhood <laughs> went down, when, 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 when that happens, a lot of time is when the revolution gets tough, the folks that you are revolting against see the danger and bring you in and assimilate you into the process. So there's no more, no more struggle. But I pray that, that there will be witnesses Amen. about what the church needs to do what the African Methodist Episcopal Church needs to do, how we need to stay strong and remember, yes, our pivot foot is anchored in Christ Jesus and no, no Euro step is gonna change it because they tried, but they cannot. So we look always to maintaining that which has kept us so long. We are a church of love, freedom, liberation, justice, equality, and changing community for the betterment of all mankind, all humankind. So that's that's our structure. That's our hope. Amen. Lord, we thank you for discussing, allowing us to discuss, give us strength, help us so that we too can understand the necessity to always speak truth to power, speak truth to ignorance, speak truth to lack of courage, speak truth and comfort to those who are disheartened. So keep us in your hand and use us as only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, everybody. Great amen. job. Thank you, everybody. Amen.